family and internet stranger Stephanie here and I've got a new what's for dinner video for you. Today these meals are going to be pretty simple. They're all very budget friendly and I was able to use up a bunch of stuff out of my freezer. Let's get right into it. First up, I had some appetizers, and this will be an entire video of its own for game day appetizers coming up probably next week. This will be posted, but I made some little smokies. I made three different types of pigs in a blanket and some baked brie, and then I just kind of snacked on it throughout the day, so it was not a big dinner. Next up is a chicken stir fry, and this was something that I threw together. It was not based off of any particular recipe. So I made a marinade out of some soy sauce, a little bit of hoisin sauce. I added to that some ginger paste. You could also use a ground ginger if you had it. And then I was out of garlic, so I used garlic powder and then pineapple juice. So I did not use an entire can of pineapple juice. Usually when I make stir fry, I use canned pineapple chunks, but I didn't have any of those. I did have this pineapple juice that has been sitting in my pantry for a really long time. So I used about half of the can and the other half of the can I reserved for my rice because when I do stir fry, I like doing it with rice. And when I cook it, I do half water, half pineapple juice for my liquid. So definitely recommend trying that if you never have. So I put part of my marinade in with my chicken and the rest of it I set aside so I could add it in when I did my veggies. So I let my chicken sit in the refrigerator in this marinade for about an hour or so before I cooked this. And then once that hour had passed, I put it into a hot wok or if you don't have a wok, you can just use a regular pan of any sort. So I put it in there, cooked it until it was all the way cooked through, and then removed it from the pan. I also had a little bit of avocado oil in with that as well. So once it was all cooked, I set it aside so that I could cook my veggies. I get very paranoid about cooking chicken. I think I've mentioned this on my channel before. So I don't like to cook it right in with the veggies. I will cook those separately and then add my chicken back in. I do like my veggies soft, but just cook them to whatever your preferred texture is. I added more of the marinade, not all of it, but just a little bit of it into my veggies and stirred them around and kept an eye on those up until they were just about done. And then when they were just about done, I added the rest of my marinade into the middle here. And then I also added a little bit of a cornstarch slurry. So just a small amount of cornstarch and water mixed together. And then that thickened this up. I added my chicken into it. And then with the slurry in there, it did allow for everything to really come together nicely and all those flavors to blend in. And this was so good. I had not had chicken stir fry in a long time and I used to have it on a regular basis. So I was really glad I had found some of those peppers on sale. I did my rice in the Instant Pot. I simply did a cup of rice and a cup of liquid. It was white rice. Uh, and then my liquid is half pineapple juice and half water. I put it in my Instant Pot, set it to sealing, cooked it for about six minutes, and then let it do a natural release. And then once it was done, I just used a spatula to get it up off the bottom of the pan and fluff that up a little bit served it with a little bit of broccoli as well. You could also put the broccoli right in the stir fry, but I wanted it separate. Next up is a freezer and leftovers meal. I had made pot roast back in the fall and I did not eat all of it and I knew I wasn't going to want the leftovers right then, so I froze them. So I simply took them out, put them in a pan, simmered it until everything was heated through since it was already cooked. It didn't take too long, only about 15 minutes on the stovetop on a low heat. And I served that with leftover Italian potatoes, which were in last week's video, and also some of that broccoli that I had also had the night before with the chicken stir fry. The following night, I was really feeling the pigs in a blanket, and then I also had some other leftovers from the appetizers I had made. So this is some of the baked brie. I finished up the rest of that. 
and then I pulled pigs in a blanket out of the freezer. When I had made them earlier on in the week, I didn't think I was going to make it through all of them at one time, so I decided to freeze some, but then a few days later, I was in the mood for them again. So I took them out of the freezer, threw them in the air fryer, and then that was just a really simple dinner. I served them with some pork and beans, now, this is so random, but I grew up on these Campbell's pork and beans. They are my favorite beans, but where I live, they do not exist. They are not an option. So when I was home for Christmas, I bought a couple cans of the Campbell's pork and beans and brought them back in my suitcase with me. So I was so excited to have these. Do y'all have anything like that? Let me know in the comments if you have something that you just cannot find in your area. And so when you're in another area... You have to grab it, even if it's something as simple as a can of beans. Let me know. The next night, I made some Italian chicken pasta. So I have done this before, and I had it even in my best of 2022 video because this was one of my favorite things that I made last year. But this time, it ended up being more pasta than chicken just because the piece of chicken I had was really small. Other than that, there really weren't many differences. I also used bow tie pasta instead of spaghetti. I will have the video where I made this originally linked in the description box below, but when I did post a grocery haul and mentioned this, I did get a comment asking if I was going to show it or if it was anywhere, so I figured I would show it again because this one is pretty popular and it has become one of my favorites. So I started out with some really well-seasoned chicken. I seasoned my chicken with salt, pepper, garlic powder, and onion powder and Italian seasoning. So that's what went on to the chicken. And I seared it on both sides in a mixture of butter and olive oil, and then threw it in the air fryer to finish it up there. Then in a different pan, cause I didn't want my sauce to really get all of the brown bits of the chicken as much because the pan I used for the chicken definitely gets a lot of brown bits in it no matter what I cook. So in a separate pan, I did a mixture of butter and olive oil, garlic, and then I added some spinach to that once I had my garlic all fragrant. And then once my spinach is completely wilted down, I add a little bit of heavy cream to it. And then once I've got my heavy cream in there, I mix that in. I mix in some Parmesan cheese as well. And then I use my pasta. You could just reserve some of the pasta water in case you need it. I have one of those big spoons that makes it really easy to grab a pasta like bow tie pasta and just move it from one pan to the other. And I find that that leaves a good amount of water on it that I don't need to add any extra pasta water. But just in case for your purposes of your sauce, if you do want to just drain your pasta and dump it in, reserve a little bit of that salted pasta water. So my bow tie pasta, I just cooked it in water with a decent amount of salt. And then once I pull that over to the other side, I realized that I forgot to season it prior to adding the pasta. It was fine. I remembered before I ate it. So I at least had a chance uh, to catch that. So to my pasta, cheese, spinach, and garlic, I add in a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, a little bit of onion powder because I already had garlic in it. And then I added some Italian seasoning to it. The Italian seasoning is key in seasoning both the chicken and the pasta. It makes it so good. I love a good Italian seasoning. And then I also added a little bit of crushed red pepper to the pasta. With this, I wanted a Caesar salad. Caesar salad kits were too expensive for what I wanted to spend. So I saw that they had this chopped romaine mix was not too bad at Walmart. I picked that up and then I already had Caesar dressing at home. So I used this Ken Steakhouse Creamy Caesar, added that right onto the top of that chopped romaine. I love chopped salads that you can eat with a spoon. That's one of my favorite ways to eat salad. If I can eat it with a spoon, I'm more likely to eat it as a salad. And then I add my Parmesan cheese to it. I didn't have croutons, so I just left that part out and just did a simple dressing, lettuce, and cheese mixture. 
shake that up. I love getting everything evenly distributed in there. And then my chicken was done. I added my chicken in with my pasta. When I made this before, I added the chicken on top, but again, I had a smaller amount of chicken this time. So this was delicious as per usual. And then this is another one that had been on my best of 2022, but I was in the mood for it again. And I had one last thing of chili left or at least regular chili. I do still have more chili in my freezer, but the chili I have in my freezer now is a vegan quinoa chili, and I don't think I'm going to add that to mac and cheese, so that'll probably end up uh, being a meal in the next few weeks, or uh, maybe even waiting until I do a Daniel fast, because I will probably do one of those during Lent again this year. So I made mac and cheese according to the box. I used the Aldi one, I'm a stickler for my craft mac and cheese. The other ones don't compare. And I thought with this one, since I was adding the chili to it, maybe I wouldn't mind that it was the Aldi brand. It wasn't bad. It just wasn't as great as when I use craft mac and cheese. I don't measure the main thing I do differently than the box instructions. I add slightly less butter and slightly more milk than it calls for because I just prefer a different ratio in my sauce. And then I added a slice of craft singles as well just a slice of cheese to it which i have done ever since i saw that on megan's channel over at megan's kitchen once my mac and cheese was done i added the chili right on top of it and layered this up last time i had made it i had also added an extra bit of cheese on top of this i did not feel the need to do that this time around i didn't have any easily on hand so i simply added red onions on top of my chili because I did already have those and this was just as delicious almost just as delicious it would have been better with craft but it was still pretty delicious and then I had leftovers again the next day for lunch thanks so much for watching I hope you all enjoyed this video and if you did I hope you'll give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't already and that little notification bell so you don't miss any videos that I post I've got new grocery hauls coming out on Mondays what's for dinner is happening on Wednesdays and I do have some occasional new content coming out I might even have a video on Friday for you this week thanks for watching